Hey there everybody, it's Rad. Today I'm going to be drawing uh, birds, and specifically I'm going to be drawing these macaw parrots. I'll be drawing these two, and in fact I'm going to be switching them in their order when I put them on the page. I'm going to be talking about color theory today, and I'll be using the color wheel as a guide. So, artists often use purple or violet for shadow, and also blue. And those are the colors I'm going to be relying on a lot today to create these darker tones that you see here. I'll be overlapping colors using colored pencils. The colored pencils I'll be using are by Prang. And this box here has 12, as you see them here. And they're um, pretty economical for what they are and for the quality that they are as well. This box here in the United States costs $4. I've rounded up, but that's pretty much how much they cost. So I'm going to begin my sketch of this one here, and maybe I'll go a little bit bigger. Now, sketch is light and loose. I'm going to go a little darker just so you can see it better on the page. But normally, I'd go even lighter than this, I have to say. And you're just trying to get the feel for what you're drawing. Now, the first few seconds, I try to get the main shape. And then I refine and define and make this more like what I'm seeing. And I could also use some of my uh, artistic license to change things around if I like. Like, I don't know, I might make this eye over here more pronounced and less of an ellipse. Uh, an ellipse is a circle seen from the side. So I'm gonna go like this. I see this white area. Then the red, let me fix the wing. Is it really this high? I think so. Again, I could change a few things around. I mean, this is nature and it's, you know, perfectly imperfect as I always like to say. All right, so that's that for now. And I'll put some of the texture on here later. Now, as I go darker with my lines, I can commit to a line once I am more confident, and that would be my contour line. But I'm gonna do a shading drawing, so I don't want too much of an outline here. Otherwise, it'll look more like a cartoon. Okay, let me work on the other one next. I kind of feel more comfortable doing the body first. in shadow. So there they are. They're having a conversation. And it's time for shading. All right, so I'm going to start with the one on the left, and I'm going to do a base of red for the sections that are red. That is the uh, local color. I could do a gradation. A gradation is when you practice going from dark to light with your colored pencil, let's say over here, I'm gonna go darker. Um, it has to do with pressure, how much pressure you put on. Notice I do these loops and they keep going over what I just did before. I'm not doing that, right? I'm right away filling in. Now, I might make it look easy because, you know, I've done this before, but it takes practice. And try to get it the same width. You know, some people tend to try to make them into tornadoes. Try to get the same width because then you, sometimes you'll have to big section of pale color and you'll need to render that. Luckily, I'm using this um, graph paper so it kind of helps me stay in that space. Here, I want to press a little harder. Now, let's do some overlapping. So, when you do a shadow color like blue and purple, you are going to want to just press really softly. All right, the idea is that you're overlapping the blue or the purple. In this case, I'm gonna use blue because guess what? When I do put blue, I get purple anyway. Um, red, yellow, blue, the primary colors, and orange, purple, and green in the secondary. If you mix these two, you're gonna get this one. So in this case, it's kind of a double whammy. I'm getting both of the, of the shadow colors in one. I'm gonna press softly here just to turn change, transform that red into a duller and darker tone. 
Now, would I use a shadow color on a light section? No, right? Because that's supposed to be light. I'm gonna stick to putting this in the darker section. I'm gonna press really hard now just to prove to you that when you have these sections like that, what I'm gonna get to, I'm gonna need to press really hard. But the local color is red, so I'm gonna go over it with red. Local color, the main, it means the main color that something is. It also has another meaning. It also means like when you're in a, in a landscape and you see recurring colors, that's called local color as well. All right, so right away, I'm gonna be pressing harder here. And over here. And I'll go over that later on with the blue. But see, that's your first type of shading. It's just by pressing dark to light to get that gradation. Those different values, different tones. Now, if I feel like I wanna sharpen, I have a sharpener at the ready. Um, when I'm doing shading, I do like to use the most flat, widest area I can. Why? Well, it fills in areas faster. All right, let me go ahead and overlap a little bit of the blue. Notice it's looking like it's purple. As I mentioned before, there's some color theory going on. These two colors are making that purple. And you can't see me right now, but I am looking at this back and forth, constantly looking at this uh, reference material. That's what I'm basing this on. I need to keep looking at that. Now, to give it more density of color, I think I kind of want to put a little orange in here. Orange is a, an analogous color. Colors next to each other in the color wheel. Like the neighbors. You know, the neighbors of red are violet or purple and orange, right? And adding them a little bit in here, it's not going to hurt. I could even try this light red, uh, also known as pink. Pink got lucky, got its own name. After all, we don't call light blue schmoo. this area. All right, let me get in here with the actual black now. I'm gonna continue now with the next one. Local color here being the yellow. And I might wanna also consider using some violet for the shadow parts and also some of the analogous color here. A neighbor of yellow is orange. And wow, I pressed really hard. I'm gonna have to do a, a, a turn on this one. Notice how I, I keep this steady and the pencil steady and then I turn both of them at the same time. It's a very efficient way. If you notice, that was only basically one turn. Let me hop on over to some blue.
You know, I feel like I want to use this orange first. All right, so I'm going to do this here, here. Now I'm pressing soft. Don't go crazy yet. Pressing soft because I'm going to do more layers. All right, so let's put in some more of that detail. Go ahead and let's start with some purple on the dark section. My lines are perfectly imperfect here, kind of textured and fluffy. All right, let's try that some of that yellow again. Okay, see this? It's becoming a more richer color now. Pressing hard, overleaf, oh, overlapping those two colors I had there, the orange and the violet. Yeah, I quite like how this turned out here. So we'll do that. Overlapping this. And a little bit here, a little bit there, but not everywhere. and more yellow, because they really went over that with a lot of orange there. Yellow, the local color, the main color that this is. Try some brown in here. Because I do like the look of this one with the multicolors. I twisted my pencil over it, so I and purposely use the um, sharp part of the pencil, not the, the flat area, to get that texture in there. See, these lines keep twisting this. Let me go ahead and put these little details. I think I'll go over them later on with some purple again, like I started to here, and then maybe a little bit of black. To do the feathers. I didn't finish those feathers. Let's go in now with um, with the black. Remember, I'm going to keep the sections light that are supposed to be light and textured. Dark, medium. And let's do this side. Let me see if I can leave one little spot for a highlight. There, that just made it come alive by doing that. Now let's fill in this area. Notice the way I do it with texture lines. I mean, this is how, uh, after all, feathers that look a little like hair, but they're feathers. I'm gonna go in with some black and overlap some of this darker area with purple. It's gonna fill in. It's great. I'm gonna put in some yellow as I see there. Maybe put 
put in some orange already. Notice I'm just scribbling it in. I mean, texture right away. And I'm gonna turn this paper over a little bit so I have better access to this line. Let me put in more of the local color, which is what I see here is more of a brown actually. So let's do that, dark to light. Dark, medium, light. Dark, medium, light. And it's been cropped off at the side, which means it's been um, cut off at the sides, this wood, as if it at, were to continue beyond the images, the image here. Here's your chance to, again, refine, define. I'm using brown in here, look at this. Uh, this brown is on the warm side, so it's, it's working out. So just go ahead and See what else you need to add to this to make it more detailed. And if you think that the highlights need to stand out more, well, you make the dark parts darker. That's going to give the illusion that the light parts are lighter. Right? So there you go. There are two parrots here. They are having a conversation, a dialogue. What are they talking about? That's up to you. If you like to do the backgrounds, um, put this, these two birds in a particular scene of your choice using your imagination. All right, now it's your turn. Finish up your work. And I got two words for you. Get cracking. <laughs>